Kia ora, bōvanaka and tōwha lava. This is Taiohi Hour, brought to you by Te Puni Kōkiri, um, and this is hosted by uh, Te Kore Mako o Taranaki. And I'm joined here by two beautiful um, Māori Pacifica women, uh, Wahine uh, Lexina Nikita Schuster and Emmeline Pickering Martin. Uh, so ngā mihi to you both. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to come and talk to our langatahi today about uh, lockdowns, uh, the vaccine, and COVID-19. Um, so for anyone who may not know you, but they should, um, I'll let you I'll let you to introduce yourselves. I'll let you go first, Lucina. Okay, hi. Um, I'm Lucina. I'm, I'm not even going to talk. Do I talk about the virtual route? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a doctor. <laughs> Um, and I'm down in Taranaki at the moment, so I'm. Are you? Are you here as well? What if? Me? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm originally from Taranaki, born and bred. Nice. Yeah. So I'm. I'm in Taranaki at the moment, um, working in at the base hospital there. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah. And nice. also did a show. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> did some TV show. <laughs> <laughs> something about roses. <laughs> I don't know, you may have heard of that or something. <laughs> nice. And Emmeline, yourself? Kia ora tato. Nisam bulabanaka na yadangu Emmeline Pickering Martin. Um, I'm Emmeline. I am currently residing in Tamaki, um, in Te Atatū, woo woo, uh, on Te Kawarua Maki Rohi. Uh, so I am, what am I? I'm a teacher, educator, I work at the University of Auckland um, and also for Hapai, Te Hauora, the Māori Public Health um, Organisation. I am their comms advisor. Nice. Cool. It was so, much more effective than my one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so we are pretty much, so the Charlie show was brought about just to help inform rangatahi here in Tanaki to help encourage them uh, to learn more about the vaccine and to educate themselves more about it. Um, so, yeah, I pretty much today we're just going to talk about the vaccine, everything about COVID-19. Um, so I've come up with some questions, so hopefully um, they're great questions. I haven't done this in a while. But uh, we we ran a focal group last week uh, with Tuyota, and that was with rangatahi from aged from 15 to 24 and a lot of them um, asked heaps of questions and talked about a lot of things to do with um, why they decided to get the vaccine. So all of them were actually vaccinated which is great to hear and witness. Um, so my question is what is what vaccine is being used in New Zealand? I'm pretty sure you can answer this Lesina. Um, so what vaccine is being used in New Zealand and is it safe? Yeah. So we're using the Pfizer here in, in New Zealand. Um, it's an mRNA vaccine. And um, they they have to go through our medicine safety authority to be, any, anything does, any medication that we use here um, has to be approved by our medicine safety authority. So mm. that's all been done and we wouldn't use it if it wasn't. Um, so, yes. So, so. Amazing. Is there anything else you wanted to add? No, 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 no. Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, and so just with that, um, going from, you know, what our Dungeon were talking about, are you both vaccinated and why did you decide to get vaccinated? Yeah, I'm double vaxxed for the fam. Um, I have an immunocompromised child. So I've got three children, 16, 11 and 5, and our five-year-old, oh, sorry, six, so he'll tell you he's six. Our six-year-old, <laughs> um, he is immunocompromised. He was super premature and um, will always have lung capacity issues. So, he, um, yeah, we had to get, I can't imagine not getting vaccinated. He's my son. Um, and so myself... Uh, his dad and my 16-year-old, we're all fully vaxxed. Awesome. Good. Um, same. <laughs> and because I'm an essential worker, essentially, so I nice. work with people who are immunocompromised and mm -hmm. I would not want to obviously pass it on. Um, I'm mm -hmm. trying to protect myself and trying to protect others as well at work. But I only recently got my second vaccine. <laughs> so I wasn't... <laughs> 
it, all my work colleagues were getting it done straight away and I just was, I was studying for exams and so I was so um, behind the ball and I was like, oh my God, I got to get it done because I'm going to be, I'm obviously going to be speaking passionately about getting it done and I haven't even had both. So, yeah. um, so now I'm double vaxxed and I feel uh, happy about it and, but yeah, that, yes. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Um, I'm also double vexed as well. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah. And <laughs> um, so with that as well, um, what is some advice that you may offer for Rangatahi that may be a bit nervous or anxious to get the vaccine? Yeah, I guess for me, um, because we're working with Rangatahi here in West Auckland as well, who have the exact same, I guess, fears and um, nerves about it, the the best kind of advice I can give is those fears are absolutely valid you're allowed to be nervous about something and it's your body um I just think trust trust in the bigger picture and looking after your nannies your kuros your um brothers and sisters that are smaller than you and might not be able to um just trust that you can look after them and by doing this it's a way of doing that yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, so, so what you said, but it's also we're not um, trying to, I mean, we're obviously trying to say get vaccinated, it's great, but um, especially for our youth who are, you know, they, they gather their own information now, you know, and they like mm -hmm. to know things. And so it's really understandable to have questions. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's not about us saying get vaccinated, get vaccinated, get vaccinated. So you just feel overwhelmed by people just telling mm -hmm. you what to do. If you mm -hmm. have questions, ask them for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, find out from credible sources. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of mm -hmm. not credible information out there. But um, wise yourself up. That's totally normal. And if you have questions, that's totally normal. If you feel like you're not sure, but you want to. You're not an anti-vaxxer, mm -hmm. but you just don't know enough about it. That's cool. That's really normal. And I think yeah. um, finding out the right information is fantastic. And then you can decide yeah. absolutely right. It's your body. Um, you can decide what to do with it then. And I'm sure you'll come to a similar kind of conclusion that we've all come to. Also, and just from what you said there, Lesina, um, so social media obviously has a lot of misinformation and yeah. anyone can really post anything and spread a lot of fake news. Um, so how how can our Lamate distinguish between, you know, misinformation and something that is facts? Yeah, that's such a good question. <laughs> because, you know, it, a lot of stuff is disguised really as being credible um mm -hmm. when it's not but i think the bigger picture is a really good way to look at it like input if um if the government is putting out facts mm -hmm. they're usually true they will be true um mm -hmm. and you know, there's a lot of clever scientists who spend their whole lives working on this kind of stuff um mm -hmm. and you know we yeah, we just all aren't experts in every single area, and so it's really important um, to try and find who who knows what they're talking about, which is hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of people don't know what they're talking about, but a lot of what yeah. the government puts out, you know, is for the safety of um, Aotearoa. And so, mm -hmm. about that. yeah, in terms of like that whole um social media thing and the big distrust of the government which is like mm -hmm. inherent right they they do some really shady stuff in terms <laughs> of Māori and you know everything yeah. else but it's more the like you can hold two beliefs at the same time like you can mm -hmm. absolutely not trust the government but you can also believe that you can protect your whānau by doing this mm -hmm. it's not one or the other it's not yeah. like I don't trust the government so I'm never going to use medicine again like you can have both those beliefs and that's absolutely fine yeah. Right. Yeah. Awesome. And um, from a um, how do I say this? From a doctor's point of view, oh, it, um, how <laughs> how I mean, how would you encourage people to take the vaccine? Um, when you know, I try to tell people that our um district health boards are already overrun as it is even before COVID. 
So, and people just don't seem to get that because my mum is personally going through a lot of um, health issues right now. And so I would be personally really angry if an unvaccinated person was to take up a bed that she could have. And um, so mm -hmm. how, like, can, can we encourage, how can we encourage people to get vaccinated and show that, you know, there's a bigger picture and our health boards are already, our hospitals are already overrun. Like, I don't know if that was a question, but <laughs> you kind of get what I'm saying. Sure, I like that you, you feel clearly passionate about that. It's really true. Um, it's, a, it's a really interesting topic. Um, yeah. Because some people do think that why, you know, why should unvaccinated people get access that vaccinated people mm. have? Um, so I don't know much. I don't know if I'm probably because I'm a bit like for everyone. So I'm yeah. kind of a bit everyone kind of is, is oh, I don't know. Um, everyone should have access. It's just a basic mm. need, but. You're right in that it's so important. Um, I mean, to just think about a collective. You don't have to think about all of New Zealand if that's not your jam. Mm -hmm. But if you, you know, you care about your family or loved ones or your partner or whatever, mm -hmm. um, I think it's just thinking about someone other than just what's other than yourself, and and mm -hmm. that is what being vaccinated and immunity is kind of about. Um, mm. you know, we're all protecting mm. someone we love in a way. Yeah. And so as you said about your mum, mm. yeah, it would suck if someone, you know, if she really needed health care and she couldn't get it because someone else kind of chose not to. Um, what do we do about that? I don't know, actually. It's a really... Yeah. It's a bit of a tough one, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah. We've about these I mean, yeah. I just should think, what if it was there? Mm, like you think yeah. that, I should kind of think, what if it was my mum and what would I want to happen to her? Or how yeah. would you know? Mm. Yeah. What do you think? Any thoughts on that, Emmeline? Um, I, you know, I'm in the same boat as Lucina. Everybody deserves healthcare as a basic human right. Um, and it's really I think it's just important to see where people are coming from and to really listen to their fears and their ner like the nervousness and stuff and I guess I completely understand um like I would be ropeable if I couldn't access healthcare for my baby like mm -hmm. what um and so it's just kind of thinking you know thinking with a te ao Māori hat it's manaki, right? It's manaki tanga. It's knowing tanga. It's ensuring that we're taking it's kaitiaki tanga in so many ways, mm -hmm. taking care of our community first, as well as ourselves. And I think once we start looking at things through a te ao Māori lens a little bit more, um, we can see that it kind of aligns in a weird way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, just think about your fano. Like think about the sickest person in your fano, and we all have one. Yeah. That's a really good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a question here from Amber Jade McCaskill, who's on the live. Uh, so this person is 12 weeks hapu. Uh, what advice do you have for a new mum who was afraid to get the vaccination? Her midwife asked her to wait until after she was 12 weeks. Look. <laughs> um... um I guess what are you, I would just be asking, what are you afraid of? Oh, excuse me while my <laughs> my whole crew of motorcycles ride down the street. Um, <laughs> typical West Auckland. Um, so I would be one. I would be asking what she's actually afraid of. Like, what mm -hmm. what is what's scaring you? What concerns you about um, the vaccination? Is it about Pepe? Is it about you? Um, those sorts of questions and my only advice would be there are lots of hapu mama that are out there that have been vaccinated um, quite early as well I know one person in my life who I'm not allowed to say is pregnant is hapu <laughs> <laughs> and they're um, less than 12 weeks and they've been double vaxxed in that mm -hmm. space of time um, and you know there's hundreds hundreds of hapu mama that have done it 
Um, mm. And it's normal to be nervous, especially when you've got Peppy crowing inside you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I asked for the mums. Yeah. I will just second what England said as well. I, 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 it, this is such a, it's obviously really close to people's, you know, it's, it's close to people's hearts. It's a really, um, mm-hmm. di, di, I don't know, divisive kind of subject. Um, but yeah, I, can I just second what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's lots of like, um, there's lots of people who, um, have lots of information out there that are reputable like mm. how I have heaps of stuff around pregnancy and vaccinations and those sorts of things but I think it's just looking in the right places as well mm. yeah awesome and Bianca Rokere asked uh, how do you deal with needle phobia <laughs> you I don't you don't <laughs> I honestly, I know, and I'm a doctor. I can give needles to people, no problem. <laughs> and but getting it on myself, so Bianca, is it? I this was me. Um, but it, I carried. I just I was like oh, I did breathing exercises in the whole bunch, and I honestly didn't even feel it. And then I felt a bit silly after. Um, <laughs> and so. I think, yeah, I, I just gonna have to do a lot of mind over matter and breathing techniques. I feel you, sister. That was me. <laughs> yeah. Um. If you have a smartphone, you can download the Headspace app and just like do the breathing exercises before you get there. Um. I was gonna. Yeah, yeah. I was um at the working at the vaccination center for Waipareira and mm-hmm. seriously people in cars were like distracting each other playing games and like being like look Aww. at me look at me look at me <laughs> and then the needle. but it really works like you need a distraction and mm-hmm. make sure you're just taking care of your breathing because that's one of the um one of the issues is people get so worked up and anxious and then they yeah. feel really light yeah. yeah and it's okay to let the people there know as well mm-hmm. um, They'll be able to support you through it and talk you through it. And we've dealt with so many people like us and you, needle phobias. <laughs> um, and they're, they're just fantastic, really. So express that you're that you're nervous. That's really yeah. that's, that's normal. I'm scared of a lot of random things. So yeah. <laughs> roses or <laughs> <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> it's cool though because like. Um, at Waipareira, there were like, um, you know, teenagers that um, have greater needs, um, mm-hmm. people on the autism spectrum that came down with their carers. There were so many different people with lots of different, like, high needs. Um, mm-hmm. And it was just really nice to see everyone, you know, come around them and aki them and then um, talk to them. And some of them, it took like over an hour, two hours just to talk through things with them. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, it's our jobs. It's not to just come in and shove a needle in your arm. Like, mm-hmm. health professionals are there to really talk to you and inform you and give you a little how through the process. Yeah. And I think even if you don't want it, just let someone know how you're feeling. Because if you're the type of person that you're scared, you just want it done, you want to go in, and you want to sit there for 20 minutes and leave it away, um, let them know that too. But just, yeah, talk it through. They're all there to support you however you need. You feel like you need to be supported. Awesome. Um, and just with the COVID vaccine again, um, I know a lot of questions there are around um, why people should get the COVID vaccine if, if they can still catch COVID. Uh, so what's your thoughts around that? Yeah, so with all the, with everything we've been immunized against in the past, you can still catch that. It doesn't, immunity is a really hard concept. I even find it hard. I've just studied exams and I've had to study this whole thing. So it's, it's a really difficult concept to get your mm-hmm. head around. But essentially, your body is just building antibodies. Their antibodies are like fighter cells. Mm-hmm. Um, so that if your body comes into contact with it again, then it's your body can attack it faster and get rid of it better yeah. effectively, if that makes sense. And so you may get it, yeah, mm-hmm. um, 
not as not as commonly and not as probably um, strongly is that a word probably not but <laughs> as if you were vaccinated but um, but um, but yeah your well, your body will just be able to fight it mm. quicker. Awesome. Um, and we have one question here for Dr. Lesina from Helen Noe. Uh, lots of us find it annoying to wear a mask. Ask a doctor, are you just used to it now? Oh, as a doctor, are you just used to it now? No, uh, I, no, I, same. I find it really annoying wearing a mask as well, the whole rebreathing thing. And mm. I, I'm just being drams, but I feel like I'm like, oh, I'm so faint. But it's not forever. Do you know what I mean? We just, it's not the worst thing. I've definitely worn more things that are way more uncomfortable when I'm trying to go clubbing on a Saturday night and I'm just <laughs> most um, you know, I've definitely suffered a lot worse um having to wear something that I shouldn't that I don't really feel comfortable in. So I think yeah. it's okay. I know. So from that, uh, I had another question here. So in terms of mental health, um, so as we know, COVID-19 does, you know, increase stress for those who already have uh, mental health conditions. So what advice do you have to help protect their mental well-being? During, during like lockdown? During lockdown, or? yeah, and just in general. Um, I guess my advice <laughs> coming from someone who has mental health issues yeah. every now and then, um, I guess my best advice during lockdowns is to not work too hard. Like your work's mm -hmm. always going to be there and you don't owe it to anyone truly to like overdo yourself just because you're in lockdown and you're feeling pressured. Like mm -hmm. I really, really deeply believe in t like taking breaks and really having a rest because it can be yeah. so easy to just like, let, oh my God, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Mm -hmm. I've got the kids running around, got to go and teach them and do this and do that and cook. And um, it's really hectic. So it's okay to take breaks, man. Don't work. Work's always going to be there. They can't fire you on the first break you take. Yeah. <laughs> take that break. Yeah, I just got from a full week of mental health break from both yeah. of my kids, and that's massive for me, but, man, I needed it. It was, like, week nine, and I'm a solo mum with three kids, you know? Like, mm -hmm. you have to take your breaks. Um, And I completely agree, completely agree. And then in addition to that, you know, there's, um, there's just kind of, like, mental health hygiene mm. thing that you can do um that everyone can do that you can that you can apply to kind of any situation um mm. being that making sure and this is going to sound so repeated but it really just works if you do the basics like make sure you're sleeping you know x amount it's really easy for us to be on our phones and social media because we don't work mm. the next day right, right, right. make sure we're getting our sleep out our allocated amounts of sleep that we need, so mm. we need to feel healthy and drinking water, make sure that we're getting some mindfulness as well, some mm. us time to just, um, I don't know, take your deep breath, do your meditation or like talk to your whanau or whatever. Mm. And um, I had one more thing to, to add on top of that for mental health. Um, a little bit of a routine studies have shown sorry to be the doctor but <laughs> yeah. a little bit of routine also goes a long way so what it like if you eat you have your breakfast around the same time or your lunch mm -hmm. or whatever um, a little bit of routine in a day um goes a long way just for your for your overall mental health so just the basic mm -hmm. to, to not you know not forget to do all of that because it's so easy to just live in your trackies and just like you know, stay awake, binge watching Netflix for like three days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't me far. Like, we're a bit loud there. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's great for a little while, but then remember if you're feeling a bit low after that, what you know, go back to the basics. Like, I need sleep, yeah. I, need to I need to drink water. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> I need to, again, attacking me. 
<laughs> uh, Emmeline, Henino has another question for you. How are our rangatahi doing in Tamaki? Uh, we're thinking of you all and also getting vaccinated for our Tamaki Bano. Kia ora, my love. I love Henino. She's amazing. Um, our rangatahi and Tamaki are actually, they're so, so away. Like, um, it's really tough for them. And with NCA coming up with exams, they're really, really struggling um, big time in terms of educational achievement and trying to figure out where to from here. And so we're doing our best out here um, in our little rōpū out west to support our rangatahi and have a rangatahi-led system now where we can just resource them and they can just tell us what they need and we go out and do it. So at the moment, we're doing like 300 study packs for them, um, wow. and which they asked for. So... Basically, we're just saying that we've got like a group of uh, youth workers who are under 25 um, mm. and they're, they're coming up with all the ideas. And we're just like begging, borrowing and stealing money to help fund their ideas. Um, so it's really, yeah, they are struggling and they're finding the whole non-connection thing really tough. And that's something that mm. I don't think we give enough time to is that our rangatahi really need that connection face-to-face, ha-ha-ha, -face, jab your mate, play basketball together kind of connection and connection it's really yeah. uh, it's really missed in some of the corridor we have about mm -hmm. our and so yeah it is hard it's hard for them to be away from their mates and their new girlfriends and boyfriends and, <laughs> <laughs> that sort of stuff. and I really feel for yeah. them like my 16 year old is man he is over it but yeah, yeah. and obviously a lot of the our time um our rangatahi in Auckland, um, you know, some may be in different situations as well. And I've heard, you know, from people some different stories that, you know, some of our rangatahi are having to drop out of school to go work to help provide for their families during COVID, which is really hard. Um, so do you, what, what support do you guys have in place for rangatahi who may be in that situation? Yeah, it's, it's really tough and, I know that in South Auckland, for example, there's a huge number of students mm. who have had to stop and become essential workers, like essentially <laughs> doing um things like working, you know, working in the supermarkets, um, getting back to factories that are allowed to open and working in those kind of roles. Mm. Um, and you know, it's just shown that it's shown it's actually put a magnifying glass on that divide, right? Like we, yeah. you know, um Pakia students don't have to drop out and go and yeah. you know look after their families it's making the divide massive and really shining the light especially with the um digital divide so you know all these students who are lucky enough to have technology um will be you know not so far behind but all our other rangatahi that don't have access to technology um you know the divide is massive they're going to go back to school if they do go back to school with this huge gap in their learning leading into like such a crucial time in their lives mm -hmm. um, and that's really sad and I know in Auckland Digital Tour are doing amazing work um, it's, um, Eteroa and Julia are doing great giving out laptops and fundraising and but it's think you know they give laptops but they also have to pay for people's power too like this is how big <laughs> the divide is and no one really kind of gets that up yeah. in the high places like North Shore or <laughs> Like where they have parties on weekends, I don't know. Yeah, and I guess it must have been really frustrating as well just to see that, you know, what happened with the North Shore party. Like, it's just so ignorant and it really showed their privilege. You know, these heaps of people who haven't been able to see their whanau, um in months. So, but yeah, that's, it's a really eye-opener, eh? Yeah, it's amazing. And, you know, it wasn't just Pakia kids. There were kids mm -hmm. from all across Auckland. Yeah. Um, Kind of ethnicities that were there it's just the you know I don't know it's tough but yeah. it's tough for you what advice would you give to our rangatahi who may be you know peer pressured to go and break the rules or feel <laughs> that they need to break the rules to fit in don't make Auntie Emmeline and come and visit you for <laughs> real <laughs> I will <laughs> <laughs> Ask Lucina. Lucina always has good advice. Oh no, no. This is at listen, it, my mum's probably listening because she 
and she would have a lot to say about. So I, I'm in agreement. I just don't know enough about the. Um, I mean, I know enough, but like enough about the kind of social aspect of what it's done. Although it's very obvious, um, mm. yeah, well, what's happening in terms of um, division of res well resources or whatever. But anyways, for kids who are ball black breakers <laughs> or what, who want to go hang out, what was the question? Um, what advice would you give to a uh, Langataki who may be peer pressured by their friends to break the rules? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I would have wanted to be one of those kids. <laughs> um, all these people are like, yep, yep, I know. It's so understandable and you want to hang out with your friends. But yeah. I would say um, the the sooner we can kind of make this a safer New Zealand for everyone, the sooner you can get back to hanging out with your friends. And the longer mm. we play it, then the more delayed it will be for you to hang out with your friends. So just yeah. I would just say patience. And it's really hard to do. I totally get that because I would want to sneak out a window. But... I would just think about the. I remember those days in high school where you were sneaking out of windows. Yeah. Oh, you guys still aren't sneaking out? <laughs> I'm in my own house, so like, I don't know. I don't have anyone to sneak out on. <laughs> I've got kids. If I sneak out, they sneak with me. It's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh well did you guys say, oh we got one more question here from Bianca Rokere. Uh Dr. Lucina, do you think we have been a bit slow on the vaccine take up in Taranaki because we haven't had COVID in this outbreak? Possibly. I think it's really multifactorial why we've why it's been our uptake on vaccines has been really slow here. Um and one of the layers probably is that we feel a little little bit um complacent here we're so we're kind of but you know Taranaki's not en route to anywhere so we're kind of a little bit isolated ge geographically um which works in our favor but it won't work forever um as soon as one person gets in then we will all go down <laughs> um and so I think that's definitely part of it um and We've got a very, yeah, we've, yeah, no, yeah, that's definitely part of it. I'll stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Can our Taranaki hospital handle um, if we have a Delta case here in Taranaki? We, uh, we have some set up mm -hmm. in ICU for, um, ventilation and intubation support if we need it we do not have a lot so it is if we get hit here and we're a really isolated community so people can't move out of Taranaki very fast mm -hmm. what i'm saying is you know if people aren't vaccinated we're an isolated area a lot of us will be affected a lot of us mm -hmm. who aren't vaccinated so i'm not i'm going to i'm saying us collectively to try and not exclude people but i've been vaccinated so <laughs> We haven't um and a lot of people are sick we will do our best because taranaki is freaking great but mm -hmm. we will not have the capacity to look after everyone as well as we would like to so mm -hmm. it will be dangerous is what i'm trying to say and i'm not yeah. trying to like take away anything from taranaki because they mm -hmm. have capacity to um, you know, look after some sick people who are COVID, but if everyone goes down, that will be a, not a good thing. Yeah. Uh, what are some ideas that could help increase the vaccination rate amongst the rangatahi? Kia ora tipine. What a great question. In fact, <laughs> it's <laughs> what I'm doing right now. Um, <laughs> so um, up here in Tamaki, what we're doing is we're actually just letting our rangatahi speak. Um, so we've hosted one, two, three, four, four online Zoe where um, we've invited people just via social media and word of mouth, just, and it had to be Rangatahi. So 25 and under is our level here in Tamaki. And so what we did was we just 
them put the invite out like yeah we're some youth workers we'll happily sit here and listen to you talk about COVID I've got a couple of doctor mates that'll jump on if you have questions but they're not going to talk um Mm -hmm. and so we ended up I think we put the flyer out on the Sunday night and we had the first Zoe on Tuesday we had like 145 young people which is massive um for a two-day kind of turnaround and they just spoke like we just sat and we listened um and sitting and listening is huge like it Mm. some of the stuff they were saying was like yeah it makes sense it's so logical and then we hosted another one and another one and at by the third one we were like okay what do you want to do we will find you resource you just have to tell us what you want to do and so it was you know finding the resources to help them get better educated, help them share messaging with their mates, like proper messaging, not um, American TikToks, because that's what the feedback was, right? Rangatahi were watching TikTok. Here go my motorbike again. Rangatahi were watching TikTok and um, we're seeing all the messaging from America. And so now there's like a core group of young people up here who want to share messages that they now know are the truth. So it was in that sitting and listening to their everything that we've come up now with a way that we can share good vaccination messaging. Yeah. Um, and they're more they're more open to it now, I think. And mm-hmm. a couple of them have, well, not a couple, but like heaps of them have actually gone and gotten their first doses from these kōrero because, wow. it's, yeah, it's just sitting and listening. It's so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's real youth work, you know, that where yeah. you just sit and let them do everything. <laughs> And do you think because these stories and opinions are coming from obviously like real rangatahi who are just like who are just like us, like and look like our young youth, that it's more believable and people just tend to like it more? Yeah, I think it's just influences. Yeah, because that's what I was like. I was like, oh, maybe we'll get some influences on board, and you know, we'll like some brown faces. Um, but first of all, some of the influences are so shallow; they didn't even want to do it because they didn't want to ruin their whatever following or whatever yeah. and I was so surprised and if I told you their names <laughs> but you can message me later um the ads <laughs> but, I'm, I'm them. but yeah they were like oh no we don't want to you know have a, st- a stance because our followers and this is how our income which is understandable to some people um but yeah what what we like realized was that they don't care what the influencers are saying because they're saying the same thing mm-hmm. as the government they want to hear from yeah. people just like them. They want to hear from their bros down the road and they want to hear from mm-hmm. their, like, class clown in English. You know, like, all those little things actually yeah. matter to me. Yeah. Can I, can I, I just feel like I'm seconding everything you're saying, but um, <laughs> uh, same. I'm just going to take, like, a quick second to plug as well what I'm working on with um, mm-hmm. the Minister of Pacific Peoples, which is this Talanoa which is the idea as same as you Emily, probably but we've they've um they've done a bit of research we're well, just talking and 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 getting information that way um from youth probably a little bit older i think it's like 15 to 35 mm-hmm. um, at um youth and figuring out what how they feel or what their ideas are about it are and what their hesitancies are and why they may be reluctant or what their views are of it as well and uh, the same thing they just um they just had a lot of questions also interestingly there was a bit of a like their parents are telling them to do one thing but they're not sure why they're used to listening to the parents but then what do they see on social media that's a bit different so they're getting a lot of different kinds of information and they just, mm. I think the bottom line was just that they wanted to know more um, and, you know, make the decision themselves, which I think is really important. And mm. I think we need to meet them where they're hanging out, which is, you know, whether you like it or not, it's like social media, um, mm. that kind of stuff. And so I think, yeah, giving a relatable um, Emmeline's right, a relatable kind of face to it, but also just answering their questions and not like kind of telling them what to do. You know, we've got like a really bright bunch of that generation coming through, a younger generation mm. coming through. They just want to be involved. Yeah, they're not silly, eh? They know. Yeah. Awesome. And did we have any last closing thoughts 
uh, or a little shove to our Nangataki to go get vaccinated. <laughs> I would just say, um, okay, no, let me formulate what I'm going to say. Go, you, you, go. <laughs> Oi, I was just going to be like, hashtag don't be a bot, get your shots, because that's all I can think of. But um, my, I guess, advice to, or my push for Rangatahi is just like, man, you guys are our future leaders. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. we're our future leaders. And this is um, really important for our future. And I just, I hope that whatever questions you have, you find someone that you trust and that is safe for you. And you just ask them. People, there are so many people out here ready to answer your questions. I tell you, the amount of resourcing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would second that. I would say it's actually really cool that you're asking questions. And I think that that just shows how um, much initiative and, you know, how, mm. you know, people are actually really hungry for information about it. Mm. And so it's leading to the misinformation and finding the right information. And then you can make, a, you make the right decision for you based on that. I am sure that yeah. I have no doubt that you will come to the right decision. Yeah. Exactly. Like, how proud are we that our kids are asking questions? Because, man, when we were younger, it was like, yeah, I don't want to hide and I'll just go do what mum's saying. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Like, I, I don't ever remember my parents asking me if I wanted to get the measles, mumps and rubella shot. What? I just went to school and got it. Yeah, I would never have asked. I just completely trusted and everything but um yeah. it's so important it's so proud of our kids it's yeah. question and it's wanting to ask questions for mm. sure yeah but well, we have one last question here uh, for the langatahi that take the anti-vax stance what information would you prioritize to provide them about the benefits of the vaccine aroha, aroha mai, this has already been covered i don't think we've covered this one yet mm. You know, stuff did a, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, kia ora roi mata. Um, the stuff, even though I am not a big fan of mainstream media, stuff really did an excellent um, uh, know your vaccines or something, like breakdown. If you Google it, like stuff know the vaccine. It's got lots of Māori and Pacific people explaining and breaking down um the vaccine and like what's in it and what's um, good about it. Um, it even has like some of the uh, points around like people are saying this, well, this is why this, 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 and this. So it's like really informative and really easy to digest. Um, Cause you know, all those big words and no one has time for that. That's power stuff. But yeah, it's a really, um, yeah. So it's on stuff.co.nz and it's just like all about the COVID vaccine. Um, how it was made, and the process of getting it, um, the tick, all that sort of stuff. That's probably my biggest. I would be like, yeah, go watch that. Or I'd watch it with them. <laughs> how about yourself, Lucina? Um, oh, I I know a lot of, like, medical things. Do you know do, what, for Pacifica, there's the Ministry of Pacific people who, has, who have links to a lot of amazing information. Um, for Māori, I'm guessing they're probably similar. Um, I don't know all the kind of, like, mainstream stuff that's out there. I just know, like, the nerdy problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> health, um, so I, I'm not sure what the cool links are. <laughs> um, how about I have some really cool um, tiles on their Instagram too around what Rangatahi are saying so they um, Papa went out and interviewed Rangatahi uh, social distance and um, they came back with some really interesting kōrero around the vaccines and like why some were getting it why some were still on the fence that sort of thing so mm-hmm. definitely head to the Hapai, um Instagram yeah does that does that have is that about the vaccine Loretto needs to go. <laughs> is that like what the vaccine is in? Is that? Yeah, it's got like stuff like um, what Rangatahi thought about the vaccine in itself. 
um, where they're getting their information from, who like who they trust, and all those sorts of little things. Yeah. Cool. We do we do need to put out more information like that stuff article. I'm going to read that after because people do have a lot of questions about what is in it, and you know, and it's really good. Um, it's a good set of videos, like their little video things. They're like three minutes, five minutes, but it's really well made and really clear. Yeah. So I really, yeah, I recommend that. I'll send that to you, Hidden awesome. Noe. And also, same, we are putting out a video which will come out yes. not this week, but next week that will tell you it's going to be kind of like fun educational video. So, not to just like plug um, the Telenor, but. Yes. We are sending a link that will say what's in it. So I will share that on my page and then no. people can share that as well. So it'll be just be like a fun, you know, because people don't really know. It, vaccines are, like I said before, like kind of difficult to get your head around. So it'll just mm. be a fun video explaining what is what the yeah. vaccine is, what's in it and what's it. That would be great because half the time I'm on Google us um, being like, define um, <laughs> what <laughs> I don't want to watch that, you know, like, I don't, yeah. that's so boring, I don't understand it, um, but I, yeah, we're doing a video actually that will come out, but I don't know what I, I love that, I love you in videos, Lucina. <laughs> I'll make sure to keep an eye out for it and we can share that on the uh, Toyota page. But thank you so much to the both of you, Emmeline and Lesina, for taking time out of your day to come and have a coordinator with me. Um, I'm sure a lot of our Langatahi have learnt a lot and had um, and have laughed at our amazing jokes tonight. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <Our> auntie jokes. <laughs> um, but I will just oh, and just to announce to our listeners and viewers if we have any uh we are running a hundred uh, fifty dollars sorry freezing card competition and all you have to do is just name our guests so if you're currently watching it just write their names down in the comments and you might win a 50 old prezi card shot aunties yeah, yeah, yeah. oh i'm still young um how good was moira tonight hosting Get oh. it. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, you. you guys yes. are the best. I think it helps having amazing guests. So thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having us. Bye,